यूनिवर्सल अप्रॉक्सीमेशन थियरम इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ दिस लेक्चर वी स्टडीड हाउ डिसीजन रीजन विच इज इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ स्ट्रेट लाइन्स कैन बी कैरेक्ट कैन बी इंप्लीमेंटेड यूजिंग अ थ्री लेयर न्यूरल नेटवर्क दिस रिजल्ट कैन बी जनरलाइज Uh, and the generalization is known as the universal approximation theorem for neural networks it says that a three layer neural network with sufficiently many many hidden units in each layer can approximate any smooth decision boundary this is the basic idea it says that if you have any smooth decision boundary say your decision boundary is like this have this one is class 1 this one is class 1 and the rest is class 2 then a three layer neural network with sufficiently many hidden units can come very close to implementing such a decision region okay uh, this can be generalized to non binary classification and also it can be strengthened to use a two layer network instead of a three layer neural network provided you use appropriate activation functions such as the tan h function so i am using the term activation function for the function theta of s that we saw in the last part of the lecture this is a non linearity in the hidden unit so provided you use suitable non linearities it is not necessary to use a three layer neural network a two layer neural network is sufficient but for the sine function we need a three layer neural network and also if you use a uh, suitable activation functions the results can be generalized to non binary cases as well so this is a very general result now this is not a result in machine learning right because it does not say how to design such a neural network given the training data but it says that if i happen to know the ground truth that is if i happen to know the actual underlying function that is used to generate the labels from the train from the input data sets if i happen to know for example the labels are generated according to this diagram up here then i can approximate this particular function arbitrarily well using the architecture of a neural network which is the sequence of bipartite graph and often just a input layer one hidden layer and the output layer is sufficient this is the two layer neural network provided i have sufficiently many units in each layer and i use the appropriate activation functions so neural networks are way more powerful than the methods that we have seen before but a natural question is how do we train a neural network so we'll study that next So you introduce the following notation the input layer will have an index of 0 so l denotes the index of the different layers in the network the hidden layers will have an index from 1 to l minus 1 capital l minus 1 so l will be the number of layers in the network and the output layer will have an index of capital l now w i comma j superscript l is the weight connecting 
नोड आई इन लेयर एल माइनस वन विथ नोड जे इन लेयर एल दिस इज द नोटेशन फॉर द वे डब्ल्यू आई जे सुपरस्क्रिप्ट एल सो वी लुक एट द कनेक्शन on the edges between layer l minus 1 and layer capital l okay, lower case l and we look at the ith node in layer l minus 1 and jth node in layer l and the weight on that edge is w i j l d superscript l is a scalar this is not d to the power l this is d superscript l and this is the number of nodes in layer l excluding the bias node so if you look at one particular layer let's look at layer l there will be several nodes in this layer let us look at node j node j has an activation function theta in it it will have an input and an output the input will have will be denoted by s j of l and the output by x j of l so x j of l is the output from node j in layer l and s j of l is the input into node j in layer l now the way s j of l is produced is by taking a weighted sum of the inputs uh into this node so we look at layer l minus 1 there will be several nodes here the first node will be the bias node so x0 of l minus 1 which is 1 x1 of l minus 1 x2 of l minus 1 and x dl minus 1 of l minus 1 what you do is you multiply them with the weights w0 j of l w1 j of l w2 j of l up to w dl minus 1 j of l these are the weights that multiply the the values the output values from node l minus 1 and you feed it up and produce sj of l so clearly sj of l is just the summation so w0 j of l plus the summation of i going from 1 to d to the l minus 1 of w i j of l times x j of l minus 1 this is what s j of l is and x j of l is theta of s j of l it's non linearity applied to s j of l so this is how uh, inputs and outputs at each node in the neural network are generated now to understand this setup better we will introduce a vector notation it will be more convenient to describe the algorithms that we discuss for training using a vector notation instead of the scalar notation so sl is the vector of inputs into node l of the network it will just be a con collection of the nodes of the values s1 l s2 l up to sdl of l 
this is a set of all the input values into node L of the network. Theta of SL is simply the activation function applied to each incoming node, each incoming value. Theta S1 of L, Theta S2 of L, up to Theta SDL of L. X of L is the set of values coming out of layer L. So it will, here we have to include the bias term and the remaining output values. So this is what the output is. WL is the weight matrix. So it's the collection of weights between layer L minus one and layer L in the neural network. So this is WI comma J of L where zero less than I less than D to the L minus one and one less than or equal to J less than or equal to D to the L. So it is basically a matrix that looks like this W zero one of L W zero two of L up to W zero D to the L of L. So the first row represents all the weights coming out of the bias node. W11 of L, W12 of L, up to W1 D to the L of L, and so on. The last row will be W D to the L comma 1 of L, W D to the L comma 2 of L, and W d to the l minus 1 comma d to the l of l. So this is a matrix of dimensions r d to the l minus 1 plus 1 that's the number of rows by okay so I made a bit of a typo here I'll fix that d to the l this value here uh, should be d to the l minus 1. It should be d to the l minus 1. So each row of the weight matrix denotes the set of weights coming out of node i in layer L minus one. The jth column of WL is the set of weights that are incident on node J in layer L. We want to know which weights are incident on node J in layer L. So these ones, W0J, W1J, W2J up to WD to the L minus 1J, they would be given by the Jth column of this particular matrix. So the idea here is that once we have defined the vector notation, SL, which is the input vector into node L into layer L is WL transpose times X of L minus 1. This is an input output relation. XL minus 1 is the nodes, is the values that come out of layer L minus 1. SL is the values that go into layer L and they are obtained by doing this multiplication. You need the transpose because you want to extract the right column for each particular node. So if you take the jth entry in SL, that will be the jth column of WL multiplied by the input vector XL. So you get the right correspondence. So the idea here is that initially, your input vector x0 
will be some vector like this 1 x1 x2 up to xd this is the node that this is the input vector coming from the data vector that we have uh, and what we do then is we first pass this x0 through the first matrix of weights and we get s1 then we apply the activation function and we get x1 then we get x1 we feed it into w2 and we op compute s2 then we apply activation function and we get x2 as the output and we do this until we get to xl minus 1 we apply wl to compute sl we apply the activation function and we get xl so this computation is done in a feed forward manner at each layer we have the input uh, the vector that we start with is xl minus 1 so the output vector from the previous layer we are multiplied by the weight matrix we get the input vector into layer l then we apply the activation function and we get the output vector for this layer so just to emphasize this this is layer l minus 1 it has d to the l minus 1 plus 1 nodes this is x of l minus 1 we want to compute sl which is the input vector into layer l and this is done by doing a matrix multiplication using wl then we apply the activation function and this produces xl and the size of this will be d to the l plus one nodes because now we add the bias term so we go from d to the l minus one plus one nodes uh, giving the input vector to d to the l plus one nodes giving the output vector so we can summarize this using the forward propagation algorithm So here the input x is 1, x1, x2 up to xd. This is a length d plus 1 vector. What we do is for l equals 1, 2 up to capital L. We'll compute SL, which is WL transpose times XL minus 1. We'll compute XL as 1 theta of SL. And then we'll end. And so, as, so we recursively do this. And at the end of this, we will basically compute the output which is the vector x uh, superscript capital L. Now next we'll discuss the computational complexity of forward propagation. So note that the total number of computations for computing say one vector SL is basically the number of edges in layer L and so that is the size of the matrix W L which is D to the L minus 1 plus 1 
times d to the l. So that's the number of computations we need to do in order to compute the vector xl. And so, so this is the number of edges in layer l. To compute xl, we still have to apply the activation function. to each node. So that is going to be d to the l. So the total number of computations in layer l equals d to the l minus 1 plus 1 times d to the l plus d to the l. And so the overall complexity is just the sum. It's the sum of L going from 1 to capital L, d to the L minus 1 plus 1 times d to the L plus summation of L going from 1 to L, d to the L. So this is the number of edges in the graph plus the number of nodes in the neural network. So if we call this V and this Q, then it is V plus Q. That's the total complexity in the forward propagation algorithm. Intuitively, you visit each node, each node at each edge once in the graph. And so this ends up being the total complexity you have. Now this is obviously dominated by the number of edges. So it's of the order of V. So typically in a neural network, V could be maybe a million edges. Q could be a few thousand nodes. So the total complexity is clearly dominated by the number of edges. So now, so far, we have introduced a new machine learning model which is a generalization of linear models. It is called a neural network. And it is a generalization because it is a multi-layer uh, version of the linear models, which was a single layer network. And the parameters here are omega, which is the weight vectors in each of the layers, the weight matrices in each of the layers. So we have introduced the model parameters. The input into this model is the input vector x0, which is 1, x1, x2, up to xt. This is just the input data vector with the augmented uh, value of 1 to incorporate the bias term. The output is denoted by Excel. Now the size of Excel will depend on the application. We'll mostly discuss linear regression. In this case, Excel will actually map to a scalar. So we'll use the symbol X superscript L for it. If we do logistic regression, Then Excel will be a probability vector. So it will be of the form p hat 1, p hat 2, up to p hat c, where c is the number of classes. For linear regression, the loss function will basically be a function of Excel. And the target value y, and it will be the squared loss. For logistic regression, for logistic regression, the loss function is simply the log loss that we have. And so depending on the application, we can have different loss functions. So we let En of omega denote the loss function 
on a single example. So En of omega is G of Xn of L and Yn. This is the loss function that we apply to, uh, to uh, the output generated from input vector Xn and the Yn being the true label. So in the case of linear regression, this will be Xn of L minus Yn square. And for most of our discussion, we will do consider this case of linear regression for simplicity, but much of what we discuss can be easily extended to logistic regression and other loss functions as well. So now we want to select omega to minimize the average training error. This is how we train any machine learning model. We define the model, we can study what its model parameters are, and then we select define a loss function, which is usually a standard squared error type loss function, and then we minimize the average loss function across the training set with respect to the model parameters. And this is what the process of training is. And the same philosophy applies to neural networks like it did for linear models before. And the way we generate the optimal parameters, the way we compute this solution numerically is to use the same method, which is stochastic gradient descent. So the idea is that in iteration number k, we let omega k be the current choice of our model parameters. Then we select An example x and y n at random in this set apply a forward pass to compute the error function, the loss function, which is G of xl of n and yn. Once we have computed this, we compute the partial derivatives. So for each weight vector in each layer and across each pair of nodes, we compute the partial derivatives of this form. And then we simply update things. We simply let wij of L be wij of L minus epsilon times den of omega k by d w i j of l. We update the, para the weight vectors at each layer in this way and, and that is basically how we progress until we converge to some uh, optimum value. Now because the function is not convex in general, the loss function, this will only lead to local minimum and that is fine for most practical purposes. We are not aiming to seek for a global minimum. Uh, we will be happy with a local minimum as is the case with most practical applications. And so we come con continue this algorithm until a stopping condition is reached. 
So we'll discuss more about how one can heuristically find a good stopping condition and how the update rules can be applied uh, in more details later on. But let's just take this as given. This is the basic idea of stochastic gradient descent. You will do a forward pass to compute the loss function for a current choice of model parameters uh, using a random example. Then we compute the partial derivatives and then we do the usual update for each variable. Now the question is, how do you compute this partial derivatives? So one natural approach when you don't have any further information about the problem is to use a numerical method. Use a numerical approximation. So what we do is to compute say den of omega k by dw11 one one of 1. If we want to compute the partial derivative with respect to this particular weight value, then what we do is we take w11 one one of 1 and we replace it by w11 one one of 1 plus delta w. We apply a small perturbation to this weight vector and we'll call this w11 l with a bar on top of it right so what you do now is you let omega k plus be the model parameters with w11 replaced by this perturbed value by w11 l bar and all other weights being the same and what you do is now you see how much this perturbation affects the output value so all you have to now do is simply go back and compute en of omega k plus using forward propagation. So all we did was change one weight value that for which the derivative we want to compute. And then we see what the resulting loss function is and we can approximate den of omega k by dw11 one one of 1 as en of omega k plus minus en of omega k by delta of w. So this gives us a numerical approximation to the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to one of the weight variables. And we can repeat this for all i, j, and l. So for each value of i, j, and l, we have to compute the partial derivative with respect to w, i, j to the l. What we do is we just change that weight vector by adding a small perturbation of delta w to it. We hold all the other weight vectors to be the same as in omega k, and then we compute the loss function for the perturbed value. Then we take the difference like we have up in this equation and this will give us the partial derivative with respect to the weight variable of interest. So what is going on here is that we have say this is node i in layer L minus 1. This is node j in layer L. This is w i j of L. Okay. We want to compute the derivative of this with respect to the loss function. So layer node i is connected to many other nodes 
node j is connected to many other nodes there are also other connections that go between layer l minus 1 and so on and we compute the loss eventually we will compute uh, so this goes on we compute xl at some point and then we compute the loss function here so what we want to do is understand how this particular weight variable affects the output loss function so we hold all the other weight variables fixed and we will and we will compute the we'll just change wij by adding a small perturbation to it we will see what the loss function is with this perturbed value and then take the difference as we have in this equation and compute the resulting get an estimate for the resulting partial derivative so this can be done it won't be an exact computation but it will be a approximate computation and let's assume the approximation the numerical approximation is reasonably good Even then, this method is not practical. This is because for each partial derivative, we have to do the full forward propagation from scratch and this requires order q complexity and so since we have to compute the partial derivative separately for each weight vector the total complexity in this approach is going to be order of q square now typically in modern neural networks q is of the order of 10 million so q square is going to be a very large number 10 to the 14 and 10 to the 15 so this is a number of computations we have to do for just one pass one uh, one update in the stochastic gradient descent this will make the sgd very slow and hence practically infeasible so the main issue with numerical approximation is that the computational complexity of order q square is too large is unacceptable now fortunately there is a way to fix this and this is the back propagation algorithm um, this was invented by Rumel Hart, Hinton, and Williams in 1986. And this is an algorithm where only order Q complexity is required per update. So instead of order q square complexity, which is the, uh, the what the naive numerical approximation needs, Bragg propagation algorithm only requires a complexity which is order q, so linear in the number of uh, edges in the network. So remember here, throughout q is the number of edges in the network. I may have reversed the notation, so let me change the notation. This is, we'll call the number of edges Q and the number of nodes V. 
So this is the complexity of the backpropagation algorithm. And so we'll discuss this next lecture. This is one of the key algorithms that allows us to efficiently train neural networks. And it is widely implemented in all practical methods for training neural networks. So it's a very important algorithm and we will start by discussing it in the next lecture. So we'll end the lecture today here.